so Snowden, we're gonna know who he is. He looks a bit like Sam, but he's really good with computers. <laughs> so Snowden is directed by Oliver Stone, shown by Oliver Stone and Cara Fitzgerald, and the it's the film of Snowden's life. It starts with Snowden, played by Joseph Gordon Levitt, meeting documentarian Laura Portress, played by Mr. Leo, and journalist Glenn Greenwald, played by Spock himself, Zari Quinto, in the lobby of a hotel in Hong Kong. If you've seen Citizen Four, this will all seem very familiar. And they go to a hotel room where they're later joined by uh, another Guardian reporter, Ewan McCaskill, played by Tom Wilkerson. And Snowden talks about how he came to realize that he, that he had to leak this material. And the film flashes back to the events that led him there, um, including his brief stints in the army before he was discharged for medical reasons. And then he was swept up into the CIA surveillance program because he's so bloody super smart. And this was overseen by the Machiavellian character Corbin O'Brien, played by Reese Evans, doing this voice. This is a fictional. This this is the fictional character. Fictional character, yeah. and it also sort of ish, but not really. Talks about his relationship with his girlfriend Shailene Woodley, and it's also a bit about the hoo ha the Guardian had getting the stories out during uh, the four days he was in the Hong Kong yeah. hotel. And this is a clip where Snowden brings up his reservations about the surveillance programs with Corbin O'Brien while they're out hunting, because that's what men do. Great shooting ad. Thank you. Most people already catalog their lives for public consumption. Well, they catalog part of their lives, and they do it by choice. We're not giving them the choice. We're just taking everything. Most Americans don't want freedom. They want security. It's a simple bargain. If Good girl. Good girl. If you want to play with all the new toys and be safe, you pay the price of admission. I accept people. They don't even know they've made that bargain. Where's the modern battlefield, soldier? Everywhere. What's the first rule of battle? Ever reveal your position. And if one unauthorized person knew, if Congress knew... And so would the enemy. That, Mr. Snowden, is the state of the world. Secrecy is security, and security is victory. So... <sighs> I uh, don't think this is a good film at all, but it's an enjoyably weird film. And I think uh, my biggest reservation is you watch it and like, what is the point of this film? Because Citizen Four exists, which was shot at the time. Yeah, this was all I mean, it's an absolute thriller of a documentary. Absolutely well. brilliant film, which is all the Hong Kong footage of Laura Poitras, and but instead of being played by an actress, it's the it's actual the, person. Actually, what happened? And yeah. it unfolds in real time. You're watching history happen, and it's uh, pretty amazing. And I think. Uh, to theorize what the idea behind the making of this film was is that they wanted to reach the wildest the wildest and the widest <laughs> the craziest and the most craziest people uh, as possible and but the way they do this is by dumbing down simplifying and at times just saying out loud what's going on and the approach is so redundant because the actual facts of the story are thrilling in and of themselves and they don't need to be Hollywoodified but they have been in a way which is both stupid and hilarious. So his ascent through the ranks is like a sort of deleted scene from Men in Black or something. There's literally a scene where he's like, solve this puzzle. The best time is nine billion hours. And he's like, I've just solved it. It's like, it's been 10 minutes. It's like, you cannot have that scene anymore where the person solves the super fast puzzle really quickly. Even faster than you thought. That it's was ridiculous. even in the trailer for the imitation game. Yeah. Kira Nutty does that. And there's also a scene where he's downloading stuff onto a little SD card and the bar's loading and it's stuck at 95% and the guy's going to come through the door. Oh, and it's yeah, like, yeah. this isn't 1995, Oliver Snowden. Things just work now. Things just <laughs> download. <laughs> okay? Things don't get stuck. Buffering yeah. isn't a thing. Also, we just had the Bourne movie this year and it, like the fourth Bourne movie was all people reading stuff on screens. Yeah. You can't deal with more drama consisting of things exactly. happening on screens. And I think the fact that you know how it ends isn't necessarily a problem because there's loads of movies which are based on real events which are thrilling and exciting because you get caught up in the story. But the structure is very problematic because it starts with him after the events in this Hong Kong room, but also, and keeps on referring back to that. So it's like, oh, is he going to solve this? It's like, well, I've already seen him in the Hong Kong room i already knew he did it then i saw the movie and i've seen him do it and now it's flashing back before he did it yeah yeah and because i mean maybe this is just 
me because I've seen Citizen Four. But if you've seen if you've seen Citizen Four, you remember those videos that came out. It's very strange to see these actors dressed exactly the same in in a completely replicated hotel room, and it just makes the thing. I mean, the whole thing is a reenactment, but it just makes everything seem like a reenactment. So it's like you're watching an incredibly expensive but shit documentary of like, you know, actors playing out someone's testimony. Yeah. Um, and it's just very odd. Um, and the performances are slightly all over the place. Joseph Gordon-Levitt, once you adjust to his weird vocal impression. Um, hello. Uh, I'm, I'm Snowden. Edward Snowden. Um, he think I think he's like an admirably committed performance. I think, you know, he's really going for it and, you know, hats off to him. And Shailene Woodley does her very best with what is completely no material. Yeah. As this girlfriend, she like doesn't, it's like, oh, you're always so stressed all the time. And Raddy's like, can't you see that this man is wrestling with his conscience? Stupid bitch girlfriend. Um, for I'm not sake. really sure about, uh, I got some reservations about work. But um, I feel like Shane Woolley, maybe her performance is brilliant because on the page, her character is slightly unbearable, but she's just so likable and charismatic that she becomes uh, tolerable. So, <laughs> <laughs> well done. What a performance. And uh, also Ben Schnetzer, who was the lead in Pride, does a really good job of like layback slacker, amoral hacker dude who's like chewing gum. Like, oh, you don't know that we hack everybody all the time? Oh, check out this fucking pussy over here. It's pretty much his character, but he somehow makes that works. Reese Evans is hamming it up so much uh, in a way which I think is kind of brilliant. And I think it's almost like he performed the scene. He's performing the scenes as written, almost to demonstrate that Oliver Stone, how stupid his movie is. <laughs> but like Oliver Stone was like, that's brilliant. He's like, okay, I'll just continue doing this, Oliver. Yeah. And uh, there's a one particular standout scene with Reese Evans, which is just so, probably the funniest scene I've seen this year. Uh, <laughs> absolutely hilarious. And I think... One of the biggest problems is that the film never really gets a handle on who Snowden is. He's a slightly unknowable character. Which is true in reality as well. Which he's... is true in reality. And, but he's basically, because the movie's so simplified, he's portrayed as super smart, but also staggeringly naive. So he's someone who's so clever, he aces all the exams and excels through the ranks very quickly. But then he's shocked beyond belief that there's all these undercover operations going on. and uh... which, which, which doesn't make sense on the face of it because... He's got such powerful libertarian principles that he will risk his own freedom in order to get this information out to the world. But, like, <laughs> he must have had some suspicion of government beforehand, you know, like... Yeah. Surely. Exactly. And um, the thing is, like, the story's about someone who's immersed in a culture, and he was, you know, had this job for, like, years, and then he decided to do something about it. But it's odd because Oliver Stone has done that character arc because that's the arc of Charlie Sheen's character in Wall Street. Somebody who was a amoral like stockbroker who then decided to he had enough of this lifestyle, and so that com- shades of grey. Like he must have been somewhat complicit in this for a while, and then decided not to. Is completely stripped out of the movie, and it basically I would say Oliver Stone hasn't made a good movie in, in a long time, and it is very much an old man's movie both in the way that he doesn't really understand technology and uh, it's a bit of a rant. I mean, I did laugh a lot, but I did see this movie for free, so I wouldn't really recommend it. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait till it comes on TV and uh, have a few beers and laugh watch at it. Home. And laugh, laugh at home. Yesterday I bumped into Imelda Staunton She was up with her dog and we got talking I asked her what she does when she isn't acting She said she likes podcasts for relaxing 